In today's Sharp Saturday video, we're going to take a fresh look at a knife that we first looked at three or four years ago when we were part of the Gauntlet Review Circle, and which I have since, by the way, recommended over and over and over as a really good value in a USA-made all-around knife. I'm talking about the Gerber Strongarm. And just for fun, we're going to kind of compare it to this classic knife that I know Magnus Anderson likes, the Gerber Prodigy. That's what's coming up next here on Survival on Purpose. Welcome back to Survival on Purpose, your home for information and gear reviews related to camping, survival, and general preparedness for regular folks. My name is Brian. Thanks for joining me. So the folks at Gerber were kind enough to send me one of their strong arm, fine edge knives. And this, again, as I said, this is a knife that I have recommended for the last three or four years, ever since I first put my hands on one as a really high quality knife uh, in under $100 range, made in the USA, with Gerber's limited lifetime warranty, just really rock solid knife. You may recall uh, three or four years ago, I was involved with a group of other YouTubers in, in a thing we were calling the gauntlet where we passed knives around just to see how well they would fare. And this was one of them that, that I, <laughs> and I, it, it took a beating all across the board and did really, really well. So um, I'm happy to get one I can really do a little more, little more in-depth testing with now. I don't have to send this one down the line. And also what I thought we'd do is go ahead, since it is, it is very, very similar, as you can see, let me just draw these sheets, very similar to the Prodigy, which I know is one of Magnus Anderson's um, classic favorite knives. I think he just posted something recently about this, or Lily did. Uh, I mean, uh, this thing's cleaned a lot of fish from Magnuson. Anyway, so as you can see, they're very, very similar. We're gonna talk about what's, what's the same and what's different about these real quickly. And then we'll, and then we'll uh, We'll put this thing to its paces here and, and do the uh, traditional survival on purpose knife testing. And you know we're going to balance test this, right? So with no more rambling, let's get down to the old stump top and get to doing some of that knife stuff. Beep, 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 This just in. I just found out that the Gerber Strong Arm is now part of the Gerber Custom Program, where you can customize and personalize your knife by picking your own features and adding some really cool personalized laser mark to the blade. Okay, so here we are. The old stump top and we've got the uh, strong arm on your left and the prodigy on your right and we'll talk about the specs of these things they are very 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 similar um, so we'll take a look at the strong arm first uh, both these knives have a about a five inch blade of ceramic black coated 420 hc steel they're both full tang with just an over molded handle the uh, strong arm has a rubberized diamond texture over mold uh, very kind of a nice swell in it um, it's almost almost symmetrical but it's still got a little bit of a flare here you can see so on the cutting edge so you can index your hand pretty well but it feels the same either way in your hand um, features a striking pommel here overall length of 9.8 inches and it weighs 7.2 ounces you can see this one has a fine edge blade and it's sort of a semi clip point slash drop point blade um, um, very very useful style blade it feels really good in your hand this thing is super comfortable very grippy and that's the strong arm the uh, prodigy is essentially the same every all the specs are the same it's still got a five inch blade it's a 9.8 inch overall length 7.2 ounces it's a full tang also the handle's a little bit different not quite as aggressive a texturing on it so just to compare the handles here you can see the strong arm is a little more symmetrical and got a little deeper texturing but it's very 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 similar and then of course the prodigy this prodigy is serrated i think they're also available in fine edge as the strong arm is also available in fine edge or serrated and the strong arm is available in either black or coyote brown handles so that's the the, the specs for the blades and as you can see they are both by the way made in the usa they both feature gerber's limited lifetime warranty so that's the knives talk about the difference in the sheaths first of all we'll look at the uh at the prodigy sheath so it's a very nice nylon sheath it's a plastic insert snaps in very well very nice retention I and mean, you have to shake it really hard to get it out it's got a, a pass-through belt loop here and some molly attachment straps here you can hook this onto molly and then if you really want to take it off you can, but you're gonna have to like um, unscrew these two screws here because it's, it's bolted there, but uh, there's that. The 
strong arm has a little more versatile sheath setup. It snaps in just like that. This also has the uh, lashable, removable plastic um, sheath, but it's a lot easier to remove it. Let me just pull this out. This is for something else, so move that away for a second. So a couple options you have. So first, you can unsnap this here. Let me just unsnap it. So you can unsnap this. You can slip, slip that through some molly loops up top, and you can use this to connect to molly at the bottom. And you can, you can put this on any molly vest or anything like that or on a backpack or whatever. Um, or you can, again, snap that there like so. Snap that around like so, two different places. And you have a really very strong, secure belt loop here to carry it that way on your, on your belt. You can even, if you choose to do so, you could turn this around, put it there, and there, and you'd have like a drop leg sheath and it'll, it'll, it'll drop down lower if that's what you want. To me, that's a little bit, you know, those snaps are pretty solid there, but still, it's, it's, it's got, you got a chance of losing it that way, I think. I don't know. That's just me. Maybe I'm being overly paranoid. But the other thing that I think is really cool about it is you can take that off. You can just snap this here to get it out of the way. You can take put this little adapter here on here. You just uh, slide it there like so. Then you clip that there in there like so. And now you have a scout carry sheath. You run your belt through there. And out there, you can carry this thing on uh, scout carry. And left to right hand doesn't matter because the sheath is completely ambidextrous. So I think that's pretty cool. It's a little bit of a pain in the neck to get that off. But I use a knife. I just take the knife and put it in that little slot right there where you can get a hold of it because my fingers are not strong enough to do that. And just squeeze them together here. Once you get them squeezed together up here, it'll come out. But you got to squeeze them to that notch. Okay, there it is. And that comes off. So there's that. But if you don't want to use scout carry, but you want to have keep yourself the option you can just always um stick this on there like so and it's kind of still out of the way but it's there if you need it the last thing i want to mention about the sheaths and then we'll get to doing some some actual knife stuff is that you can see the strong arm has a single retention strap at the top of the handle and the prodigy has a double retention strap which on the surface seems like a good idea but i'll say this sometimes when i'm trying to resheath the knife in a hurry these things are in my way because they're so close to where the knife goes in so you kind of have to almost hold them back with your hand and put it in. And then you can, certainly they give you a little added security on retention because there's, there's double, but um, I don't have that problem with the strong arm. I think that that's an improvement in my opinion because it's, it never, ever happens. So there's that. So let's, let's uh, see how well these things actually do some nice stuff. First of all, this, this, I want to see how sharp this thing comes from the factory. It's, it's a brand new knife. I've not used it for anything. So we're just going to see. We're going to do the old, the old redneck sharp test. And <laughs> Okay. It shaves. That's good. Now the Prodigy, I don't know about. I've had this thing for a couple of years. So let's just see if it still shaves or not. Uh, not really. It's sort of maybe, but almost. But again, it's a couple years old and it's not been resharpened. So we're going to set it aside though. Because take a look at the strong arm. So since they're both the same steel, both pretty much the same specs, we're going to pretty much use the strong arm for the most part in this video. So I've got here a really solid piece of wood. I don't know what kind of wood it is. It was my baton until I broke it, uh, banging on another knife with it. But you can hear that's stinking solid. So thought we do is we're going, to, we're going to try to do a little cross batoning just because I want to check out this blade and then we'll split this out because I don't really have anything big to baton. I need to, I need to re replenish my test of, of testing wood but we'll just do a little cross batoning first. I think that really definitely kind of shows out how tough something is. And this by the way has a pretty sharp spine. We'll check that out too but let's just see. Let's just commence to banging on it. How about that? Just kind of slowly chop it. Because if you didn't have a saw and you need to cut something this hard, it's going to take you forever to whittle it down. And we're doing a knife test. So if you don't like this, don't do it to your knife. That's fine with me. Let's 
This is some hard stinking wood. I don't know what it is. But it's hard. Real hard. There we go. Finally. So, I mean, look, you can, you can hopefully, you maybe even see the density in that wood. So, but, man, oh man. Set that aside. We're going to take this longer piece here that's got some knots in it and try to split it down the middle because check it out. All right. There's that. We'll do one more. Okay. And you can see we have some knots in there. Not big knots, but they were knots. That's about the size of the knots that broke the Gerber profile a few years back. Chipped the edge out. So anyway, split that down. I want to try to get this to where we can do a little bit of that old feather sticking stuff now. Because, you know, I think that's worthwhile to do. Because any knife that you use, you should be able to do knife stuff. And I think being able to carve some, some pretty good feathers is a good, a good test of, of the edge and the, and the usability of a knife. And this is again, and this is some really, really dense hardwood. Not the best wood to make feathers with, but and this edge is it's like a pretty much like a saber ground edge. It does not feel like a hollow grind at all. But man, you can just tell when you're when you're carving feathers on wood, you can get that really just it feels like glass smoothness. It's just because it's really, really hard wood. Let's try this other piece here, see if this will carve a little better. I don't know if it will or not. This has got some knots on that side. Let's see if I can find this side doesn't, eh, it might have some knots. Something I try to do is a little, little side tip when I'm carving feathers uh, with a blade like about this long. If possible, I try to go down to where the blade stops on the wood, on my, on my surface, whatever I'm, I'm resting this on right here. So I don't cut the feathers off. And usually I can, usually I can keep them on there a little longer, but it just really depends on the wood. Some woods easier than others. This is not the, uh, most feather friendly wood <laughs> what's next okay you know i don't want to miss an opportunity to uh play with some fat wood so let's get a little fat wood a little fat wood carving going on here before we start the fire i want to talk about this edge a little bit so it's really sharp i think it's a really good general purpose edge i think the angle of this grind might be a little too a little too shallow for being optimal for, for this kind of woodcraft work. And I think this is a piece of fat wood. Let's see. This little piece of do. Oh, yeah, this is. It could certainly be sharpened, re reprofiled, or whatever, but it's doing pretty good on this fat wood here, actually. Okay. <laughs> ah, man. So there's that. So, anyway. Sorry for the, wow, that smells great. Sorry for the fat wood diversion there, but it's definitely 100% usable. It's not necessarily, uh, it's, it's not a super fine woodcraft edge in my opinion, but although let's see, it depends, maybe it just depends on, maybe it's just the wood because this is, this is curling up really good here in a little bit tiny curls. So let's see how the back of it scrapes some fat wood because that's always a good thing to do. And actually, I'm going to chop this off right here so it's nice and straight. And uh, it's doing pretty good there. Okay, well, well you know, um, did really good there. The, that nice sharp spine. Let's see what we get when we uh, hit it with a ferro rod, so to speak. So. Let's see how this works. Oh man, it's great. It does excellent, excellent, excellent at the ferro rod. And look at that. Oh yeah. Me likey. Okay, well, first of all, as you can see, I've got 
this strange light on the side of my face. And it took me a minute to remember what that, that lighted ball up in the sky was because it's been a while since we, we've seen it here in Georgia. So we will uh, endeavor to persevere through that. But as you can see, we did a little bit of practical testing with the strong arm. And we use the strong arm just because they're both essentially the same blade, the same steel. And this is, this is a new factory edge and that's what I wanted to check out. So this knife is 100% solid. Like I've told a lot of people, if you're looking for just a really solid all around knife, you know, under a hundred bucks, well under a hundred bucks, um, you can't go wrong with the Gerber strong arm and, and again made in the USA so that's pretty cool but as you know here at survival on purpose worldwide headquarters we maintain a state-of-the-art cutting-edge knife testing facility and one of the one of the testing stations that we really like to put all fixed blades through is the there it is, the balance orientation and rotation device. So I thought it'd be interesting to, to uh, since they do have a little bit different handle on them, to compare these two on the balance orientation and rotation device and just see how, um, how well they fare against each other. So why don't we do that? That was the strong arm. Here's the Prodigy. They both seem to do fairly well. So shall we try them again? Oh. Uh-oh. So right now it's Prodigy 2 Strong Arm 1, but I got a feeling that's probably more on my end than on the knife's end, but let's continue. Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that was the uh, prodigy that got back at me. So maybe it was insulted because I didn't give it credit for the win. So we'll call that one a tie now. Okay, we're going to do one more just for fun. Still tied. And we're going to call them both balanced. Okay, well, hopefully that was a somewhat informative and entertaining look at the Gerber strong arm and a quick comparison with the Gerber prodigy so i gotta say i really like both these knives if i had to pick one it would probably probably be the strong arm just because i like the sheath better i think the sheath is, is more versatile and i kind of like the handle better the handle's a little grippy but man it'd be a close 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 race because i like this prodigy too and in this case the prodigy has the serrations and by the way if you want to see the capabilities of this knife with the serrations i'll put a link right up here to a video from magnus anderson my friend over in sweden who man he is a wizard with this prodigy so i think you'll enjoy that but either way either one of these knives i think would be a great 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 choice for an all-around survival knife bug out bag knife um, whatever fixed blade knife, if you need a good solid knife that's just going to take a lick and keep on ticking, made in the USA, either one of these will work. So anyway, thanks again to the folks at Gerber for sending me the strong arm so I can show it to you. I actually bought the Prodigy a little while back after watching Magnus's video. So, and, and as always, thank you for watching Survival on Purpose. I put out a new video every Friday and every Saturday, sometimes random videos throughout the week. If you want to make sure you don't miss a single one, I invite you to subscribe to my weekly email newsletter at survivalonpurpose.com forward slash subscribe. I really appreciate all the support. Once again, my name's Brian. You're watching Survival on Purpose. Remember, survival's not an accident, so be prepared. Two is one, one is none.